Welcome to Nader's Nemesis 2.0. This is the second video that I've put together for uh, the creation of a uh, high-performance Corvair. Today, I wanted to uh, give you all an update on uh, where everything stands uh, with the development of this car. Um, in particular, I wanted to cover what my objectives are for building this car, what I'm gonna try to achieve with that and then uh, also cover uh, what has happened over the course of the last month. And uh, that kind of leads me to another point I wanna make is I'm hoping to be able to do a video every month, uh, sometime during the first week of that month uh, to keep you updated and uh, sort of keep a uh, little momentum going around uh, an update for you, for you folks uh, that are watching it on YouTube. So, um, uh, this is uh, November of 2021 and the update uh, that follows uh, the first uh, video we did in October. Um, and in this video, um, the first thing I want to cover is sort of the objectives that I've picked for this car. Um, the first objective is I wanted to build a car that can be driven every day. Um, it's got to be streetable. It has to run on pump gas. Uh, it needs uh, to use DOT tires, uh, have windshield wipers, all of the things that a streetable car needs to have. And uh, I plan to drive it whenever I want to or whenever I need to. I might not be taking it out in rain all the time, but uh, uh, I do want to be able to do that in case I get caught in rain uh, after I've taken it out. The sec second objective is I want the car to be comfortable to drive. Um, there are several facets to that. Uh, first is uh, I live in South Carolina and it can get pretty warm here in the summertime. So I wanna have air conditioning on the car. Um, I may even have a heat in the car, um, although uh, that's not a real need for around here. But I probably, if I'm going to be doing air conditioning, I may actually look at a, having a heater installed in it as well. Um, the other thing that I'm going to be doing is, is trying to make sure I design the car so that there's plenty of leg room. Now, I'm not a very tall guy, um, but I know um, some of the prior versions of mid-engine Corvairs uh, placed a premium on leg space. And I wanted to make sure that that's not a problem in this build. So I'm looking at alternatives that uh, allow for more leg space, uh, leg room in the car for both the passenger and the driver. Um, so the third um, objective is I want to utilize um, modern technology in this car. So there won't be carburetors, uh, no chokes. Uh, this this car is going to use electronic fuel injection. Um, it's going to have um, uh, a you know modern day kind of transmission in it. Um, it'll have I'm going to use an LS style engine, not uh, a um, small block Chevy SBC or big block Chevy. It's going to be an LS engine that's more modern day and and has all of the characteristics of of modern day engines uh, in this car. Uh, again, that modern technology thing feeds into being comfortable as well. Uh, these, these technologies now uh, are a whole lot better than what they were back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And the fourth objective as I, that I have for this is I want this car to uh, be a high performance road car. Um, I want it to be comfortable in, in a cornering situation and um, be able to turn heads uh, by going around corners. I also want it to hold its own in a quarter mile if I choose to go back to the drag strip. Uh, so I want this car to have plenty of horsepower, to have a drivetrain that can handle that horsepower. Um, so it's, it's a high performance car. So in summary, you know, this car is a blend of many different objectives, but it's a car that I can drive every day that'll be able to uh, perform really well. It'll be comfortable and, um, and it'll be enjoyable to drive. Um, now I may have to make some trade-offs and 
and do some different things and maybe bend a little bit on some of these objectives as I get into piecing this together and designing it. But at a high level, that's what I'm trying to achieve. Um, so now let's move into what's happened over the course of the last five weeks. Um, I've begun to design this car, figuring out what kind of uh, chassis and suspension systems I'm going to use. Uh, I looked at several different types. Uh, to do a mid-engine Corvair, there are a lot of options these days. Uh, there's the, um, the, the tried and true crown conversion that uh, has been used for many, many years in a Corvair. Uh, I'm choosing not to go with that kind of a, a setup because it uh, puts a premium on interior space in the car. It also utilizes components that are not as strong as they need to be to be a high performance car. So um, I'm not going to use a crown kind of conversion where several stock Corvair components uh, in the suspension and drivetrain area are typically used. There's another option to use some modern day technology such as an LS4, which is a V8 LS engine that General Motors made and put in several models um, such as an Impala, I think a, a Pontiac, um, um, I'm not sure, Pontiac GTO or one of the Pontiac options uh, had uh, the LS4 in it. And um, that engine was transverse mounted in the front, utilizing a front wheel drive transaxle. Um, there are a lot of um, um, conversions being done today using that engine and a transaxle that came out of the Cadillac, um, North Star engined Cadillac. And uh, it looks like a nice conversion. Uh, it, it gives you a lot of room inside the car. Um, it's a little tight side to side, uh, but um, um, provides a real nice solution for, for this. And I looked real hard at that. Um, but I really wanted to have a car that I could drive that was a standard transmission. And there are a few options to do that. Uh, but again, you start to um, risk quality and uh, dependability with a high performance option uh, with that. So the uh, solution that I've, I've decided to go with is to do a mid-engine style uh, design um, and use a transaxle. Um, and a transaxle that can handle plenty of power. And uh, the one that I have found and I'm going to go with is a Mendiola. Uh, SDR5 transaxle. Uh, that transaxle um, can handle 500 horsepower, um, which is what I'm planning to put into this. Uh, it's a modern day piece um, based off of a lot of Porsche kind of technologies, but uh, Mendiola has uh, advanced that. Uh, it bolts directly to an LS engine, uh, uses uh, General Motors clutches and, and a lot of the standard parts. Um, so it's a, a real nice uh, piece and uh, gives you lots of leg room with a high power uh, kind of application. Um, so that's what I'm going to go with. I've placed an order uh, with Ian at uh, Mendiola. Uh, he's been very helpful in answering all my questions and uh, getting me started in, in uh, looking at a transaxle for this. Uh, the other design uh, question I uh, answered for myself on this project is what will be the front and rear suspension in this car? Corvair um, suspensions uh, were pretty good for back in the day, uh, but again, when used with high performance, high horsepower applications, there becomes uh, some liabilities using that. Um, Corvette suspensions, uh, on the other hand, are designed to handle a lot of power. Uh, they are designed to, uh, um, you know, be on road courses uh, and uh, are very effective at doing that. They're lightweight, uh, they're aluminum based, and uh, they're modular. And uh, that modularity piece is uh, is pretty important because 
I'm planning to port um, from a C5 Corvette the front and rear suspensions uh, into this Corvair application. And to facilitate that porting, I'm going to be using a suspension interface module from Doberton Performance. Uh, they, he makes, Rick Doberton has designed and makes a adapter that uh, can be bolted to the cradles for both the front and rear suspensions in a C C5 Corvette, C6 as well. And those uh, adapters allow uh, you to connect the upper control arm and the a coilover shock to that uh, adapter. Um, and that way you can then use the Corvette suspension in other applications. Um, the cradle in the Corvette suspension is, is aluminum and uh, I'm planning uh, to cut that aluminum cradle and take uh, some distance out of the middle of that cradle to narrow it up and uh, we'll, we'll pick the, the amount to take out once I've mocked up uh, the cradles that I have and to see how they fit underneath the Corvair with my wheel and tire combination. So um, it's, it's, I'm pretty excited about using this. Uh, Rick Doberton's a really cool guy and, and uh, he's been very helpful uh, as I've been looking at this and, and um, I'm, I'm gonna get started uh, using his adapters in this application. Um, so that's uh, a, a big uh, choice, a set of choices I should say on what I'm gonna be uh, building this time around. Um, I have uh, acquired several of the major components of the drivetrain and the suspension for this car. Um, I have uh, uh, in my shop right now a set of wheels and tires, uh, wheels uh, from Weld and uh, Toyo tires uh, to fit on those wheels. I'm going with a 19 inch rim and back, 18 in front. Um, and uh, plenty of tire uh, all the way around to uh, help with the high performance requirements of this car. Um, the suspension assemblies uh, from a C5 Corvette have arrived and, and I'm starting to um, get those units disassembled so I can get the cradle and take it to a local machine shop to have it narrowed up. Um, I've picked up a LS7 engine I uh, actually bought that from Rick Doberton. Rick uh, had acquired that engine a while ago for a project he was going to do and is, is no longer going to do that project, so it was available. So I talked to Rick about buying it, and, and uh, he was agreeable to that. So I went up and picked it up and, and uh, um, brought that back down to South Carolina. Uh, like I said, I've placed an order for a Mendiola transaxle. That's uh, on order. There's a fairly hefty lead time for those. Um, so I wanted to get that order placed uh, quickly so um, it, it can arrive uh, when I need to have it as I'm constructing the uh, chassis for this car. Um, that um, kind of covers where I'm at at this point. I've uh, measured out the existing Corvair. I've got uh, a lot of the measure measurements for wheelbase and clearances and things like that. So the Corvair is still um, in place and all together. Uh, but, um, you know, once I get going with the chassis that I build, I'll probably start removing components of the Corvair so I can start piecing things together. Uh, but that's uh, an update for now. Um, more to come. Uh, a lot of of talk, not a lot of show at this point in time, uh, but as uh, pieces start being put together and, and assemblies start getting made, um, we'll be able to show more about what's being put together at uh, upcoming videos. So again, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, please uh, subscribe to uh, Nader's Nemesis 2.0 and share it with others. And um, if you have any questions about uh, what this build's going to be like or you have suggestions, uh, please feel free to put those in the comment section and I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again and uh, look forward uh, next month to another update.